Hey everybody, this is Miss Ray from the Great Falls Public Library and this is Storytime. It's an early literacy program for preschoolers two and a half to five and in December our theme is dinosaurs in December so we are going to continue with some awesome dinosaur songs and a great dinosaur cowboy story. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to start by waving hello. Here we go. Everybody wave hello, wave hello, wave hello. Everybody wave hello. Let's have some fun. I'm gonna pat our knees. Here we go. Everybody pat your knees, pat your knees, pat your knees. Everybody pat your knees. Let's have some fun. Good job. Can you wiggle your ears? Here we go. Everybody wiggle your ears, wiggle your ears. Wiggle your ears, everybody wiggle your ears. Let's have some fun. Awesome job. Can you flap your T-Rex, uh, your T-Rex wings, your pterodactyl wings. T-Rexes don't have wings. That's just silly. The pterodactyls do. Show me those pterodactyl wings. Yeah. Everybody flap your wings, flap your wings, flap your wings. Everybody flap your wings. Let's have some fun. Everybody wave hello, wave hello, wave hello. Everybody wave hello. Now our song is done. Woo! Good morning. All right. Do you remember what dinosaurs do when they wake up in the morning? Mm -hmm. So these are, do you know what those are called? Pachycephalorus. Let's find a better picture. Pachycephaloruses are these dinosaurs with these big, thick heads. And they use them to smash into each other like that. Smash, 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 smash. So that's how pachycephaloruses say hello in the morning. Here we go. When pachycephaloruses wake up in the morning, they always say hello. When pachycephaloruses wake up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? Smash, 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 smash. And that is what they say. Good job. All right, how about this guy? This is a brachiosaurus, big long neck. Let's get a good picture. Oh my goodness, so big. Look, here's a grown up human all the way down here. Look at how tall. Oh my goodness. So how do you, how do brachiosauruses say good morning? How do they say hello in the morning? They say hello by going stomp, 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 stomp. Yeah, here we go. When brachiosauruses wake up in the morning, they always say hello. When brachiosauruses wake up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? Stomp, 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 stomp. And that is what they say. Good job. All right, how about this one? This is a pterosaur. So you can see that this dinosaur has some big long wings. Wait, is this really a dinosaur? Oh, I made a mistake. This is not actually a dinosaur but they lived at the same time that dinosaurs did. So we're gonna use them in the song anyway. So how do pterosaurs say good morning? Any ideas? They go flap, 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 because they're always flying. Flap, 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 flap. Yeah, good job. Here we go. When pterosaurs wake up in the morning, they always say hello. When pterosaurs wake up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? Flap, 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 flap. And that is what they say. All right. How about this one? Ichthyosaurs. Ooh. Let's get a better picture. Ichthyosaurs. They live in the water. They have big long snouts and lots of teeth, and they eat lots of fish and squid. Is that a dinosaur? 
those are not a dinosaur either, but they lived at the same time the dinosaurs did. So we're going to use them in the song. So how do you think ichthyosaurs say good morning? They go paddle, 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 because they are always swimming in the ocean. Here we go. When ichthyosaurs wake up in the morning, they always say hello. When ichthyosaurs wake up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? Paddle, 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 paddle. And that is what they say. Good job. All right. What does a T-Rex look like? Do you remember? Are they little? No, they're big. Do they eat plants? No, they eat meat. Big teeth. Big, big dinosaur. So, how do T-Rexes say hello in the morning? Any ideas? They go chomp, 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 chomp. Here we go. When T-Rexes wake up in the morning, they always say hello. When T-Rexes wake up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? Chomp, 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 chomp. And that is what they say. All right, let's sing five huge dinosaurs. So this is a dinosaur counting song. So can you show me your five huge dinosaurs? Yeah. All right, we'll do this a couple of times since it's a new one. Here we go. Oh, this one comes from Miss Nina, by the way. Let me check her out here on YouTube. Five huge dinosaurs looking fierce and mean. The first one says, I eat anything that's green. The second one says, I hatched from an egg. The third one said, I have big, strong legs. The fourth one said, I fly through the air. The fifth one said, I give everyone a Chomp, thump, thump came Tyrannosaurus Rex that day, and the five huge dinosaurs ran away. Ran right in your back. Yeah, let's do it again. Can you use your other hand? One, two, three, four, five huge dinosaurs. Let me go. Five huge dinosaurs looking fierce and mean. The first one said, I eat anything that's green. The second one said, I hatched from an egg. The third one said, I have big, strong legs. The fourth one said, I fly through the air. The fifth one said, I give everyone a scare. Thump, thump came Tyrannosaurus Rex that day, and the five huge dinosaurs ran away. Good job. All right, let's read our awesome dinosaur cowboy book. This is called The Dinosaur Tamer by Carol Greathouse, and it was illustrated by John Schrodes. And there are a lot of things to like about this book, but take a look at the illustrations and you might see some familiar landscapes because Rocky and the T-Rex are going to visit some very famous places all over the Western United States. So let's read this book. Back when the West was, was still as green as a bristlecone pine and cowboys were as common as warts on a stegosaurus. One cowboy stood out among all cowboys. He was as strong as an iguanodon and as fast as a uteraptor and his name was Rocky. Now Rocky weren't a big fella, but his size didn't matter. From the time he was a babe in his cradle, there was something different about him. He teethed on a Deinonychus femur and used an Ankylosaurus tail as a rattle. By the time he was knee high to a pterodactyl egg, he could rope a Stegosaurus at 90 paces while wearing a blindfold and eating a prickly pear. Wow, that's impressive. Once when he was late for supper, he harnessed himself the meanest old Plesiosaurus that ever swam the Great Salt Lake. He got back to the shore quicker than a warthog can say ugly. Without a doubt, he was the greatest dinosaur tamer. 
ever. Kids dreamed of growing up to be a dinosaur tamer just like Rocky. And whenever there was a dinosaur problem, they took to calling him. Until one day, when the greatest dinosaur problem of all arrived in the form of the roughest, the toughest, the most ferocious dinosaur ever to kick dirt, T-Rex. T-Rex was so tough, he scratched his itches on a giant saguaro cactus and drank his water straight from the Arkansas hot springs. Yowza! T-Rex was so mean that a family of possums once threw up their paws and surrendered without a peep. Lucky for them, T-Rex had just finished a big meal. He was the rip roarness snip snortness reptilian that ever did stomp the earth, and he would not qu quit pestering the townsfolk. One day after T-Rex chased the kid's saber kitten up a tree and swiped the Johnny cakes off the fire, folks had had enough. Something has to be done, they grumbled. Didn't take no time at all to decide Rocky was their man. Problem was, Rocky was on the annual sauropod roundup, so they threw some wood on the fire to signal him. After the smoke cleared, they beat out his number on the bongo drums. Bomb. Bomb bada dum, bomb bada dum. Before the last did um, faded into the hills, Rocky swooped in riding a slobbering saber tooth tiger and leading a pack of Pachycephalorus. Those are those guys with the, the big thick skulls. That the Tyrannosaurus Rex you're meaning for me to tame? Rocky asked. That's him, all right, said the mayor. He's the rip roarness, snip snortness reptilian. Rocky held up his hand. Time's a wasting, he said. He whistled to his pachycephalorus and began to uncoil his genuine crocodile hide lariat. 50 feet, 100 feet, 300 feet, 1,000 feet. He swirled that rope above his head, looping bigger and bigger until it was as big as the Mojave Desert. And then he let loose. The rope sailed through the air and draped over T-Rex's neck. Wait, guys, would you like to lasso a T-Rex? I'm not sure that's a very good idea. What do you think is going to happen next? Do you think T-Rex is going to be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yep, I'll just go where you lead me. I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, no. When T-Rex felt the rope snug around his neck, he took off a run and he ran for the Badlands to the Pacific Coast. And then he circled around, dodged through the some Ponderosa Pines and ran for the Olympic rainforests. And there's Rocky hanging on to his lasso flying through the air. When he yet hit Yellowstone, he was going 70 miles per hour and sidestepping geysers with Rocky bumping along behind him. Before he slowed down, T-Rex had covered 15 states and visited three national parks. If Rocky ever had a second thought about tangling with T-Rex, he didn't say. He just hung on for dear, dear life. Finally, Rocky got a hold of him a hill and dallied that rope round and round until T-Rex had nowhere to run. T-Rex kept working back and forth, back and forth until he'd whittled that hill into a pile of rocks. T-Rex wound himself so tight he couldn't move. Rocky stepped up and looked him in the eye, nose to snout. I mean to break you, he said. T-Rex gave Rocky a toothy grin and flicked his rough tongue around, across Rocky's cheek. Ew. Then, just to let Rocky know he wasn't tamed yet, he let out a low rumble. Rocky crept up to T-Rex, unwound the rope, and threw one leg over that ugly green hide. Get up, Rocky yelled, and jabbed T-Rex in the ribs with his four tooth spurs. T-Rex let out a beller that was heard from the Rio Grande to the Columbia River, River Gorge. The sound split the earth right where he stood. T-Rex dropped his head and kicked his heels. Rocky sailed over his head and slumped in the mud. Ooh, that did not go so well. Well, I'll be, Rocky sputtered. He shook himself off and rubbed his bad hip. There was no way T-Rex was letting him back on. When Rocky circled left, T-Rex circled right. There was a half sachet and what looked like a do -si do before the dinosaur dance ended. While T-Rex was concentrating on the dance steps, Rocky crept up beside him and hopped on. The moment Rocky landed, T-Rex threw his head down and slammed his tail around. He spun to the left, then he spun to the right. He kept wallowing back and forth, trying to dislodge the varmint on his back. Pretty soon, his wallowing had created quite 
a big hole. When T-Rex found he couldn't throw Rocky off his back, he took to snarling and snapping his teeth. Rocky just hunkered down for the ride. Yee-hoo, fat, he yelled, hot diggity dino. Whatever way T-Rex bit, Rocky dodged the other way. T-Rex couldn't get a hold of him. Finally, T-Rex was puffing so hard, he couldn't go on. He was so tuckered out, his tail dragged behind him, slicing through the silt. Look, he's making a river with his tail. By now, T-Rex couldn't have mustered up a Texas two-step, let alone another chase. Rocky reached forward and patted the green hide and monster. Add a boy, he said. Then he pulled a zucchini out of his hat and offered it to the T-Rex. I did not know that T-Rex liked zucchini. Hmm. While T-Rex gnawed on the zucchini, Rocky sang a little tune in his leather ear. And when he was done, T-Rex was as docile as a fresh hatched platypus pup. After that, Rocky rode T-Rex everywhere he went. Over the years, they got into and out of quite a few scrapes. And there wasn't a man, woman, or child for miles around who wasn't glad to see them riding over the hills. Do you see this map? So there's the United States. Here we are in Montana. And look, all of those dinosaur tracks wherever T-Rex and Rocky went. They had quite a few travels, didn't they? Folks all remember how Rocky and T-Rex teamed up, but no one knows what finally became of them. There are a handful of folks who claim Rocky and T-Rex still roam the western foothills. They say that when the sun dips just right in the afternoon sky, you can still see the shadow of Rocky and his dinosaur standing tall and proud. Do you see the shadow of the T-Rex on the side of the mountain? And do you see Rocky right there? riding his T-Rex. And that is the end of our story. I hope you liked it. Thank you all for coming to story time, guys. Let's sing a goodbye song. We're going to sing See You Later, Alligator. Here we go. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss. It's jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon, out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.